Macro is a term often used for lenses, often zooms that simply focus quite closely. Macro for this Panasonic 30mm f2.8 is not just a marketing term though, because it focuses closely enough to project a one-to-one -one life size image onto the camera sensor. It gives a nice sense of freedom to know that you can focus from infinity down to life size, and leads me to use the lens as a sort of notebook, just snapping things I wouldn't normally, which is what I've done for this video. It truly is a macro lens. Not only that, but like any true macro lens, it should be ultra sharp at any aperture from wide open until stopping down unavoidably brings diffraction into play. Since macro lenses are also often used for technical purposes like document copying and medical photography, they're expected to exhibit especially low distortion. That's why macro lenses are invariably primes with a maximum aperture of no more than f2.8. They're not big fat designer lenses with buttons and rings and look at me stamped on them. They're dull. This Panasonic has no outstanding physical features. It is made in metal and plastic and feels quite nice. The only control is a focusing ring. It works smoothly. That's it, really. So far, so unexciting. However, the performance of the lens is not dull. From f2.8, it is sharp, critically so, right across the frame. And I mean that edge to edge. There is no need to stop it down except for depth of field. Distortion is effectively non-existent and I didn't come across any purple fringing problems. Focusing is fast, not outstandingly so like the f 1742 mm I recently tried, but if used as an out and about lens you won't find it deficient in any way. What can slow it down is the massive focusing range it occasionally has to churn through to find the spot, but more of that later. Incidentally, pinpoint autofocus is not only useful with this lens, it can be necessary. This bug is shot at f2.8, an accurate enough focus for this is only obtained through pinpoint, or Luddite that I am, manual focus. Used as a general purpose lens, it pans out well, because the across the frame sharpness, and actually right into the corners, manifests itself at all distances. The lens is stabilised and it works well. I find around three stops advantage, though on the Olympus body I'd still switch to the body system. On the GX8 it combines with the body system, though I personally didn't find that much difference in day to day use. That's subjective though, and if someone else said they did find it better, I wouldn't argue with them. I'm finding this a difficult lens to sum up. Optically and mechanically it is beyond criticism, and the price is very reasonable. I wish it had settable focusing zones, because that would avoid the occasional wait while it looks for focus between the end of your nose and infinity. That's a lot of electric motor spinning. A couple of zones would do, a switch for say 30 centimeters to infinity, and one for 1 to 1 to 30 centimetres, but that's not so important. The main difficulty I have is endemic to the very design of the lens, the focal length. It's 30 millimetre. I find it too short for macro, too long for general purposes. For macro, you're right on top of your subject. You either throw shadows on it, or you knock it over. If you like to use a ring flash, you often can't because the flash whacks the subject. That won't worry the brass cat here, but if you're photographing a bullet ant, you're in for 24 hours of all-consuming, burning, throbbing pain, according to Wikipedia. For general purposes, I find the 30mm restrictive. It's okay for portraits, but longer is better. It's okay for buildings, but shorter is better. I'm aware these things are subjective, and there will be photographers who find the 30mm focal length just right. If so, this is a high value lens and don't think twice. For the others, there are two alternatives, the Panasonic Leica 45mm and the Olympus 60mm. The Leica is expensive, but has a more useful macro focal length, though I don't think the optical performance is any better than the 30mm. I'm not sure anything could be. It also, like the 30mm, has stabilisation, which for macro is highly desirable. But 45mm is also a classic portrait lens angle of view, though ideally you'd have a wider aperture than f2.8. The Olympus 60mm is a little more expensive than this 30mm, has four settable focus zones, but is not really a general purpose lens at all. It'll double as a portrait lens, but it's a bit long if you're indoors, and again a wider aperture would be nice. For me, macro and close-up pictures are a specialised business, and the Olympus is my choice. It's not stabilised, but I use it mainly on a tripod anyway. I think the optical performance of the Panasonic is a bit better for critical use at f2.8, 
but the extra subject to camera distance offered by the 60mm focal length is a huge advantage for photographing bugs or if you want to light your subject. I find two choices here. If you do a lot of macro work and want a lens for it, the Olympus 60mm is the one. If you do some macro but would compromise that for a bit more all-round usability, the Panasonic fills the bill. What excites me in Micro Four Thirds is that for your camera body you have the choice of three superb macro lenses, all different and any one of which you can make a good case for. Thanks for watching.